In 2016, I journeyed to Egypt for the first time to be with my fiance and to learn about Egyptian culture and history. During my visit, I learned much more about Egypt and about myself than I had anticipated, about my needs and about my attitudes about the future. In 2018, I returned to Egypt to marry the woman I love and to rediscover the land of the two rivers all over again. Come with us now to explore this beautiful and enchanting country in an African adventure to the return to Egypt. Hello, this is Mohammed Bey speaking. Today is February the 1st, 2018. And this is the first video in an installment of uh, my new video series, An African Adventure in Egypt 2. If you saw the last uh, episode of my first uh, video series about my trip to Egypt in 2016, you remember that, that I had gone there ultimately to be with my fiance, Nariman Ebel Oyun. Well, I'm going back to Egypt. So by the time you get this video, by the time you see this first installment, I'll probably be back and my fiance and I will be together. But I want you to know that this video series, like the first one, will be about our adventures in Egypt and not so much about our personal lives. So, don't hope to see too much of our personal life in the video. But, you will see our adventures all across Egypt. This first video I want to talk about all the things that went into going uh, to Egypt this second time. The first time <clears throat> was basically a piece of cake. I basically, you know, just got an airline ticket, made some hotel reservations, and grabbed my passport and hit the road. This time it's a little different. My first trip I planned for maybe two months. This trip was planned for five months. And there was a lot of paperwork involved because when uh, you go to uh, marry a foreign national, there's a lot of paperwork that has to be done medical exams, proof that you're who you are, proof that you're uh, not a deadbeat and don't want to be a bum or live on welfare or something, proof that uh, you're not formally married already, all kinds of things. <clears throat> so, in the five months leading up to my departure, which at the time of this video would be in three days, I had uh, to take all kinds of uh, time out of my life to get all kinds of paperwork done, mostly. First of all, I had to prove that I wasn't married, so I had to uh, get, uh, you know, paperwork showing that I wasn't currently married. That took days and often uh, weeks. It was very expensive. I had to hire a lawyer for it. Then uh, you had to prove that you were employed or self-employed, and that took some time because you had to go to... Uh, you know, in my case, the companies I was contracting with and get letters saying that I was working with them. Then I had to uh, get other documentation together, uh, proof that I'm a Muslim because you can't uh, marry a, an Egyptian national unless you're a Muslim. So I had to go to the mosque and uh, make Shahada all over again because I didn't have a document the first time because, you know, nobody generally thinks about that uh, the first time. And after all the paperwork was together, some of it had to be notarized. And that was not uh, entirely an expensive undertaking, but it was time consuming. And uh, the uh, signatures themselves led to still other problems, which then had to be corrected. And then not only do you have to have these documents notarized in some cases, but in all cases, at least in the United States, you have to have the documents um, <coughs> 
attested to by the state that you live in. So they have to be authenticated in the state that you live in. After that, they have to be uh, authenticated by the United States' uh, Department of State. That is a considerable undertaking. If you don't live in the state of, or rather in the city of Washington, D.C., most likely you have to send the documents there, or if you live nearby, say as far away as Philadelphia or New York or Baltimore or something of this nature, you have to drive. And it takes less time if you deliver them by hand, incidentally. So during uh, this video and subsequent videos, I will try my level best to give you information that you'll find useful if you should ever visit Egypt or ever have to go through a similar process. So, I got the documents notarized, got them authenticated by the state, got them authenticated by the U.S. government. Then it was off to the Egyptian embassy in Washington, D.C. Now, you can go to either the embassy in Washington or the consulate in New York, depending on where you live. I don't know if there are any other uh, facilities in any other states around the United States, but primarily New York and Washington are the places to go. I had to go there. It took two trips. I wanted to make sure that I had everything, so I paid them a visit off the cuff just to get all the details, and it's a good thing I did because they wanted certain things that I didn't know about. And if you don't ask in these kinds of scenarios, you're not going to get all the information. I didn't know that you had to have the documents uh, authenticated by the state you live in. But because I bothered to keep calling and double checking, the information was forthcoming. So if you're ever going to travel to a foreign country from the United States and you intend to live there or have residency or get married to someone in one of those countries, you better ask as many questions as you can. Because if you don't ask, most likely no one's going to volunteer and very often we see and hear what we want to see and hear. I should have gone to New York to have all the work done that was done in Washington but fortunately when I got there and uh, discovered my oversight they were nice enough to uh, process me anyway. Also I had a large check for them and a return envelope and, uh, <coughs> and it may very well be that it helped to be an American since uh, the United States does contribute large sums of money to Egypt in this case. Anyway, after spending something like $700 on the authentication and acquisition of documents, finally, after visiting uh, the Egyptian consul twice, I finally got a blessed package in the mail with all the documentation stamped, notarized, and authenticated. That package immediately then went to Egypt via uh, FedEx or UPS where my fiance received it and is processing it even further. There's still more processing once you get into, into the country. So it's a good idea if you're going to engage in some sort of activity along these lines that uh, you have your counterpart take uh, whatever documentation is needed and take it to the ministries, <coughs> take it to the ministries ahead of schedule. This will allow you to uh, avoid some, if not all, of the delays that are inherent in uh, you know, foreign bureaucracies, and trust me, there are some. Once I get to Egypt, we'll probably spend a week in Cairo taking care of things medical and uh, bureaucratic and otherwise essential to our future. And then we'll have the rest of our time to basically enjoy ourselves. Like I said, this trip was planned months in advance. I got my ticket months in advance. On my first trip, if you've seen the video, uh, you know that I was sitting in a regular size um, economy cabin uh, chair and I was very uncomfortable. I didn't get any sleep. I had to sleep on the floor, which was, you know, very uncomfortable. Uh, <clears throat> That uh, will not happen this time. I got myself a nice business class seat that folds out to a nice big uh, sleeping area, at least reasonably large enough for me to lie down, so that I'll be fresh when I get off the plane. 
uh, you know, so that I can go again, you know, for more paperwork to the American Embassy, where uh, you go do additional processing uh, for the process of uh, being with a foreign national. Hello. This is Mohammed speaking. Today is February the 3rd, 2018. It's about four o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm out here in um, Fairmount Park. You can see a little of, there's this reflecting pool, which has been here since, uh, since the exposition in 1876, as a matter of fact. It's very cold out here. And um, at first I wondered why I even came out here. And then it hit me that um, part of the reason is because um, about 24 hours from now, I'm gonna be someplace where it's very, very warm. And that's in Egypt. And I'm out here right now because for the last couple of days, I've been asking myself, is there something I want to say? Some profound commentary that I want to make? Tomorrow, <clears throat> I will leave this frozen wasteland and get on a plane and fly 10 hours to warm, mostly sunny, indeed, certainly a little warmer than it is here, Egypt. And then have some lovely experiences with my new wife. Nora seems like an eminently reasonable individual and very intelligent, and that is what I like about her the most. I'm not saying she's ugly or homely or any such thing. She is none of those things. She is a good and decent woman, and that's what I like about her. Part of me wishes that I could come home I find that my problems, as it were, were already solved. I doubt that that's going to happen. So the only thing I can do, really, at this point, is just to go on about my business, go see Nora, have a good time in, uh, in Egypt, and hope for the best. That's really all I can do. It's very cold out here. I hope that this microphone allows you to hear me clearly. If it doesn't, I'm gonna to have to do this whole thing all over again. But when I'm in Egypt, I expect to be doing videos like this. Something for Bayes List, something for Nafasi Africa, when I finally get it back up and running, uh, something for Patreon, uh, something for um, Africa Open for Business, um, and maybe just a few diaries of my own, you know, talking about uh, the things that uh, are on my mind. So this is where I'm at right now, literally and figuratively, out here in the cold, <laughs> so to speak. And um, like everything else in my life, this too will pass. The van that uh, brought me to New York came about 10, 15 minutes early, so I was a little startled. Anyway, I was already packed and ready to go well in advance. I took a bit of video, which by now you will have seen me uh, edit together into something recognizable as a short uh, trip video. And so my adventure has begun. I got on the plane just like I was scheduled to. Despite considerable worries that I was going to be held up at uh, the airport at JFK for problems related to uh, not having the old credit card uh, that I used to buy my tickets this problem did not materialize. My major concern overall, the overarching concern was the dreaded TSA. I worried that after seeing innumerable 
videos about the bungling on all sides that the TSA is known for, that I might become their next victim. Nothing could be further from the truth, particularly on a Monday in JFK, one of the busiest airports in the world. I fully expected to have some sort of hassle. There was none. I went through the TSA uh, grist mill as quickly as anyone else. No one raised an eyebrow about the great big Muslim going to Egypt. I was treated just like everyone else. No more or no less respect. There was no pulling off to the side. There wasn't even a pat down. I just went through the scanner like everybody else. And there was no hitch. All the things that I had worried about so vehemently never came to pass. Anyway, we flew over, crossing the border into Egypt, flying up the, um, the Nile River Delta, according to the 3D map on our computers, from the Mediterranean. After that, I began to see distantly out the windows that were adjacent to me, although I wasn't sitting next to them, just how big Cairo really is. Apparently, it's an amalgam of several different cities, smaller ones, and over time, like the boroughs of New York, they've been consolidated into one great city. I could see the lights in the dark fading away into the horizon. The city is enormous, and it has many of the qualities of uh, France in the 19th century, New York in the 21st century, and London in perhaps uh, uh, the 19th century as well. There's a lot of buildings here that are modern and some that are not so modern. Uh, they have a quality uh, not like buildings that were designed in the New Empire style in the 19th century or the Beaux-Arts uh, style in the early 20th century. I took some video while we were uh, riding around after I got out of the airport. I expected the customs officers to give me some grief, perhaps some minor grief, but there was none of that either. My transition from the aircraft to the street was as smooth as glass. The airport here in Cairo is actually very modern and very stylish. And you would think that Cairo being on the curb side to many of the problems of the Middle East, you would think there would be a greater military presence uh, at Cairo airport, but there was none. I was treated with the utmost respect. The only vaguely interesting thing that happened was when I went to the customs officer and I forgot to get my, my visa. He told me, go and get it and then get, come right back. Don't get in line again. I went back, got the visa, got some money, came back. He looked at my passport and he asked me two times, what country were you born in or what was your country of origin? I told him the United States. This seemed to puzzle him, and in fact he made a phone call while I was standing there waiting for him. And since he was speaking Arabic, I can't tell if he was actually talking to someone about me or not. The fact that I'm sitting here in a hotel talking to you is evidence that he probably wasn't. He signed the, uh, the back page that he was uh, about to stamp, stamped it, handed me my passport, and gave me a pleasant smile. This was to be repeated with every person I met, every man that I met, uh, between the time I saw him and the time I finally left the airport. And I want to make that point. I'm here in Africa, at long last. And while I was here on my first trip, I had more than a few wonderful and interesting experiences. I met a number of interesting people, like Mona, the tour guide at Karnak Temple. My trip to Egypt only lasted a week during my first visit. 
this visit was going to be much longer. So sit back and enjoy the show. The African Adventure video series is part of the larger Exodus film project, a three film series on how African Americans can move to African countries to live peaceful, successful lives. Please support this project and the Africa Open for Business video series, an ongoing series of video discussions with movers and shakers from across the African diaspora at Patreon. Please be sure to share, comment, rate, and subscribe to our videos. Thank you very much for watching, and take care.